If your goal is to incorporate the kettlebell swing into your workout routine, you might as well want to do it mistake free. In a recent YouTube video from the YouTube channel Fit Father Project, Dr. Balduzzi was talking about six essential exercises men need to do in 2023. I wholeheartedly agree and enjoy this video. Matter of fact, I like it so much that I've linked it in the description. In his demonstration of the kettlebell swing, however, I saw some crucial beginner mistakes. And these mistakes make as usual for a great teaching moment. But before we get started, I want you to join our free 50K giveaway. Get a chance to win lifetime access to our online kettlebell courses valued over $2,000. Link is in the description. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstag hier. The kettlebell swing adds a mother load of benefits if you do it consistently. So let's make sure you don't make these mistakes you're about to watch in this video. Now here's what I like about Dr. Balduzzi's swing demonstration. The hip hinge. It is solid and it is crisp. The hinge is an important tool and an important movement pattern when it comes to kettlebell training. You need to know it, you need to understand it, and its execution needs to be Lawless. What follows are the mistakes that beginners do so often on a regular basis. If you've been watching our YouTube content for quite a while, you'll know these mistakes come up every now and then. Mistake number one, he's using too light of a weight. Now, of course, if you're just getting started, you don't need to swing a 32 kg kettlebell. However, you need some proper feedback. So for that matter, I would always recommend, if you're a man and you're just starting out, to use a 12 kg kettlebell. Mistake number two, he's arm dominant. He's swinging mostly with his arms, especially at the apex of the swing. Light weights allow you to do so, unfortunately. And mistake number three, I see soft knees and soft hips. A proper lockout position means that you want to extend your knees as well as your hips to the fullest. Let me show you a swing with a light weight where I can use my arms fully. Watch what happens. I can fully extend the arms. It's almost like a ballistic front raise and I don't engage into the ballistic element of the kettlebell. Now here I'm using a 16 kg, double the amount of weight, and now I engage into the ballistic element of the exercise. As you can see, I keep my arms fairly relaxed, not fully extended, but not bent, and at the top of the apex of the swing, I let gravity do its thing without interfering with my arms. Full extension of the knee as well as the hips looks like this. Boom. Proper lockout position. I have tight glutes and I pull my kneecaps up. Later in the video, he talks about either using a heavy weight with low reps or a lighter to moderate weight with higher reps. I agree most definitely. However, in the execution, I would do it a little bit differently. If your goal is strength endurance, you might want to do a hand-to-hand -hand swing with a moderate weight for two minutes. This equals about 60 reps. This is what the exercise looks like. Here's how I start. I have the kettlebell approximately half a meter in front of me. I hinge, I grab the kettlebell by the handle and tilt it towards me so that the base is off the floor. From this position, I swing the kettlebell between my legs so that the arm makes full contact with my body. Then I hip thrust the weight forward through the power of my hips, boom. Now the kettlebell starts flying. Once it reaches its apex, I'm switching hands. I let gravity set back in. I wait for my arm to reconnect with my body. My ghost hand swings with it. And once I have this connection, I go back into the hinge. If your goal is strength and explosiveness, you want to do a so-called high tension or hard style double-handed kettlebell swing with a heavy weight up to 10 reps. You can use a EMOM method. EMOM stands for every minute on the minute, which means you start the 60 second timer, the clock is ticking, you do your 10 reps, you drop the weight, and then you have approximately 40 seconds remaining on the clock, which is your rest. Once the clock strikes zero, you go back at it again for maybe two to three rounds. Watch the difference now as I swing a 40 kg kettlebell with both hands and high tension. The setup is almost the same with the only difference that I now use two hands instead of one to get started. 
Now I swing the weight with all my power between my legs. I use and I need this powerful momentum right from the get-go with this heavy weight. Now my arms make contact with my body. Now I hip thrust the weight forward, boom, and as the kettlebell starts flying, I use as much braking power as I have in my abdominals and my quads. There's so much propulsion coming from my rear that if I don't engage these brakes, boom, I am hyperextending the spine, catching or falling into soft knees, so I have to use a lot of bracing, boom, and tension when I want to propulse the kettlebell up to the chest level. Once it reaches chest level, the same thing happens. Gravity sets back in. I'll wait for my arms to reconnect with my body, and then I go back into the backswing or hinge. Heavy weights are great teachers. Your technique has to be solid if you want to pick up a 40 kg kettlebell for a spin. If it is not, the amount of weight will highlight your flaws. Finally, the good doctor talks about the dumbbell swing. Now, I've already made some videos about the dumbbell swing and how you should execute it. Jokes aside, yes, of course you can do a dumbbell swing, but I believe it is a waste of time because you're using the wrong tool for the job. So the dumbbell swing is like eating a soup with a fork. And here are the reasons why. Reason number one, the weight displacement in the kettlebell is lacking in the dumbbell. As you can see, the bell is an extension of my arm. So therefore, the weight sits deeper around here, which is the so-called weight displacement, which makes for good momentum and a good pendulum. With the dumbbell, the weight is evenly distributed between both sides. This is great for control, but bad for momentum. And reason number two, gripping the dumbbell like this is reinforcing arm dominant behavior. You see, with the kettlebell, my arms become like tethers or like a leash. I can let it fairly loose. With a dumbbell, I have to grab the kettlebell fully with my arms and therefore reinforcing this bad movement pattern. But what if I only have two dumbbells, no kettlebell, and I want to engage into a solid hip hinge movement pattern? I'm glad that you ask. Here's exercise number one, the hang deadlift. Or good mornings. The good morning, by the way, is such an overlooked exercise that I have to dedicate a video to it in the near future. So here's the next thing that you have to do. Like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then watch this video. If you're getting started with kettlebells, you've watched this great video from Dr. Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project, and you want to engage with the kettlebells, and you're just getting started, you got to watch it because it's perfect for beginners. Tutorial, workout, everything's there. So, so go watch it. Right now.